on the 2nd of June 1948, inside of Landsberg Prison, a horrific doctor who had served some of the most powerful Nazis during the Second World War made his way to the gallows for his execution. He was led up the steps of the execution structure and was then handed over to an American executioner, but Carl Gebhardt was a man who had a huge amount of intimate knowledge on the health of some of the most powerful Nazis. Many of those people who joined the political party would be more loyal to Heinrich Himmler than Hitler, especially those inside of the SS. But one man who was a constant in Himmler's entourage and staff during World War II was Gebhardt. He was a horrific and brutal doctor who was involved in many terrible experiments that occurred inside of the concentration camps. But despite being Himmler's own physician, he would also sadistically be involved in the slaughter of many. But eventually he went to the gallows for his execution. Join us today as we look at the execution of Himmler's ruthless doctor. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Karl Gebhardt was born in November 1897 inside of Bavaria. And as a young man, he studied medicine. And he began to become involved in many revolutionary political movements, especially when he attended university in Munich. He obtained his first job inside of this institution working as an intern at a surgical clinic and he worked with many skilled surgeons. Before the Second World War, Gebhardt had made a number of interesting and important developments in the field of surgery and specifically sports medicine and how to deal with injuries. He wrote a number of books on this topic and was considered one of the world's leading experts in sports recovery and he was a respected doctor and a surgeon. So how did this man become a barbaric war criminal? Like so many inside of Germany, Karl Gebhardt joined the Nazi party and he would inside of the regime become a murderer. The Nazis and Hitler promised to help many people with the problems that had plagued Germany since the First World War. In 1935, Karl Gebhardt moved to Berlin and he became a professor and also joined the SS and he was now overseeing a sanatorium where many SS members would go to recover. He switched his site from being a place for tuberculosis patients to recover initially and instead made this the first sports medicine clinic in Germany and he worked with many people developing different programs for athletes recoveries. During the 1936 Summer Olympics he was overseeing the sanatorium in which many of the world's greatest athletes visited during the competition. But then in 1938 he became the personal doctor and physician of Heinrich Himmler and with this he was now serving one of the most powerful men across Europe the head of the SS, and his work with Himmler would see him become a shocking war criminal. But as the Second World War broke out, Karl Gebhardt served as the chief surgeon of staff of the Reich, and his hospital was used as a military site for the SS to have their wounds tended to so they could be sent back to the front lines quickly. He continued to work inside of the hospital, as well as work inside of the Nazi inner circle, treating those powerful members of Hitler's government. However, Gebhardt in 1942 was sent to try and save the life of Reinhard Heydrich. Heydrich had been attacked in Prague, and the protector of Bohemia and Moravia was suffering heavily. Gebhardt was sent to try and save his life, but he could not do this. He ignored the advice of other doctors, and Heydrich contracted blood poisoning, and he died on the 4th of June 1942, and if Gebhardt had listened and administered antibiotics, like other doctors suggested, then Heydrich may have been saved. But also during the conflict, Gebhardt worked inside of the concentration camps and he was given the authority to carry out a number of surgical and medical experiments upon the prisoners of Ravensbrück and Auschwitz. Whatever Himmler said went and some commandants did not want to allow Gebhardt to conduct his work but Himmler then stepped in. Himmler instructed his doctor to experiment with specifically sulfonamide and to prove it would not have saved Heydrich's life and with this Gebhardt would use his prisoners of Ravensbrück for the sadistic experiments. He deliberately broke the legs of many of his patients and he infected the wounds with different substances and he even tried to transplant the limbs of victims inside of the concentration camps onto former soldiers of the German army who had been badly wounded during the invasion of the Soviet Union. Gebhardt was a horrific man driven by medical progress in his opinion and he had no ethics. He caused a huge amount of suffering and death with his actions but in 1944 he was questioned in his work. Karl Gebhardt had been asked to treat Hitler's Minister of Armaments and Architect, Albert Speer, who was suffering with tiredness and overwork. Gebhardt treated him, and what happened almost killed Albert Speer, 
who was not really suffering with anything too serious medically. But he continued to rise throughout the ranks of the SS and remained by Himmler's side. But as the war turned against the Germans, Gebhardt was in Berlin and in the final bastions of the Third Reich, as the Red Army were causing chaos in the city, with artillery smashing down. Josef Goebbels, the Minister of Propaganda, was inside of the underground bunker with Hitler, and he had made up his mind to go the same way as the Führer. But Goebbels was approached by Gebhardt, and the doctor tried to get Goebbels to take his children out of the city and to get them to safety. But Goebbels insisted they would all die with Hitler, and then Gebhardt was ordered to leave. He was then captured following the conflict, and during his interrogation he would discuss many of his crimes, including the experiments he was involved in. He was then brought in front of a courtroom to answer for his actions, and specifically he was brought to the doctor's trial, which began on the 9th of December 1946. There were 22 doctors on trial, with Gebhardt being accused of conducting horrific experiments, and he was found guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity. Because of this, on the 20th of August 1947, he was sentenced to death alongside a number of other brutal doctors. He said following this that, In seeing my responsibility in this way, I of course made a decision for myself. I hope that hitherto I have always faced criticism, even from foreign countries without any secrecy, but also without feeling of guilt for my activities as an expert. My last sentence is to express our own personal gratitude to a Dr Seidler, who has stood by the side of my colleagues and myself so conscientiously and with such human kindness. For a number of months, Karl Gebhardt, the former physician of Heinrich Himmler, would be left on death row to await his execution. Inside of the courtyard of Landsberg Prison was a set of gallows, in which the lives of hundreds of Nazi war criminals would come to an end, with an American executioner performing the job. On the 2nd of June 1948, Karl Gebhardt woke early, and he was informed that the day of his execution had arrived, and because of this he was taken from his prison cell, was accompanied by a number of American military policemen, and also a priest. The priest was there to hear the final words of Karl Gebhardt, and also give him spiritual support in his final moments. He was led into the courtyard and towards the gallows, and whilst here his identity was confirmed, before he began to walk up the steps. His legs had been secured, and he was led up the steps, and then handed over to the executioner. The executioner checked that his legs were tightly secured, and then tied his arms behind his back, and Gebhardt was then shuffled over the trap door, before a black hood was placed over his head. The executioner then placed a noose around his neck, then the trap door was released, and Karl Gebhardt was then declared dead minutes later. The work of Karl Gebhardt was one which began in search of medical progress, but under the cover of the Nazi party and their regime, he became a sadist and a man who would carry out terrible crimes to achieve his goals. He would make the suffering of those inside of the concentration camps much worse, and he also had intimate knowledge on the health and well-being of some of the most powerful Nazis. After the Nuremberg trials had come to an end, codes were then drawn up on the ethics of experimentation in human trials to stop beasts like Karl Gebhardt committing terrible crimes against humanity in the future. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.